Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. everybody for your contributions i appreciate it let's keep it going donate to the super chat donate to the paypal donate to the cash app it's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow let our voice be the voice the preeminent voice in black america Thank you everybody for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the super chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. Right now I'm in Boulevard Square in uh, El Centro, which is the downtown portion of Bogota, Colombia. And right behind me is the, um, basically just like the Justice Department. It's the place where all the uh, Supreme Court justices in Colombia are. So Pablo had been, they, the, the US, United States and the Colombian government have been working together and they gathered a bunch of evidence on him and they had enough evidence to send him uh, back into the United States. In other words, he was gonna be extradited. So what he did was he struck a deal with the, with the guerrillas and had them invade this place and take over and burned up all the evidence. Yeah, so uh, Pablo, can't escape the brother, he's off the chain. Well anyway, I'm gonna go ahead on out and that right there is a Congress building. It's a beautiful square, it's a beautiful country. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds.
What's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling. I'm back at it again, also known as Uncle D, the Blizzard King, and as of late, the Bounty Hunter. Um, first of all, welcome to the broadcast. I'd like to say um, thank you for coming today. This is a very unplanned broadcast. This is not something that I actually plan on revisiting, but um, I was asked to do so. Uh, and you guys have read the title. You know that this is uh, Modern Men Paying Homage to Our Godfather, Kevin Samuels. And, um, of course, the young lady who was with him has not given an interview to anyone. Uh, she has. She was operating on her own timeline, and I even suggested that she owed nothing to anybody, not even his fans. But uh, she insisted that she she wanted to speak to uh, the public and uh, talk about it. I again, I told her she owed nobody anything, and but she insisted on doing so. And the young lady that I'm referring to is Hortensia Alcantara. Now, before I get started, let me first say this: um, this live stream is the property of Dennis Sperling. Copyright Dennis Sperling 2022. Any use or rebroadcast of this copyright material uh, without the express written consent of Dennis Sperling will either get you sued or, as we do here on YouTube, a copyright strike. So let me say it and let me be clear with that. As you see scrolling along the bottom of this page, is my notification or notice that this material is copywritten. So any rebroadcast will get you sued. Any rebroadcast will get you a copyright strike. I'm just saying. And unfortunately, fair use doesn't apply. So how about that? So that's where we are. I look forward to you all challenging me on that. I'm sure you've noticed that there have been a few struggle streamers who are no longer with us or who have disappeared. <laughs> so you can ask them if you think it's uh, worth the trouble. Now, that said, I want you all to hit the KS button. Big shout out to uh, Kevin Samuels, uh, the saint, the godfather, in my opinion, the last prophet. Uh, big shout out to him. Hit the KS button. All the KS fans, this is for you guys. This is not for, um, it's not for anybody else but you all. And so I am not acting as the family spokesperson. I'm just at this point presenting this uh, young woman an opportunity to speak her piece. Um, trusting and, and caring about you all, especially I've inherited, inherited the most important part of Kevin Samuel's uh, family, and, or should I say his following, you all are the actually ones that actually cared about him. A lot of the people that followed Kevin Samuels, they didn't care about him. They didn't care about him as a human being. They didn't really appreciate him. They just followed him because it was a thing to do and they wanted the excitement. They weren't there to really learn. But uh, for, for my part, I got a, a lot of people who actually cared about KS. So, you know, I think people have noticed that over the past month and a half that the people who come to this page actually appreciated his work, have positive things to say about him. So that's why you all are here. Okay. So um, that said, big shout out to all my mods, all my mods. Welcome. Appreciate you guys. Uh, let me give a big shout out to Wrench Turner, uh, Telly Taylor. Who else we got in here? Big man, seven, nine, one, seven. Uh, the Cisco, John Wayne, again, Wrench Turner. Who else we got? Chester Williams. I always take care of my folks. EMT888. That's what's happening. I like that name. Uh, let's see who else we got in here. Uh, Be Killing You One. <laughs> That's a dope name, too. Chester Williams, if I didn't say it already. Yeah, man. But Queen Jet Black, shout out to you, too. Yeah, y'all moderators, y'all keep this, this chat room light. Keep it kosher, Mr. Albert, because otherwise I'm just going to go to members only 
and then that's 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 going to prevent anybody from commenting. So we keep it keep it nice, keep it peaceful, keep it kosher. We try to maintain respect in this chat room. That's what we do here. That's what I like. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a quick break. And I'm going to come back, and we will begin the interview. But in the meantime. Y'all make sure y'all get the likes up, man. Hit the like button. We got 377 people. I'm not starting this interview until y'all hit that like button. So go ahead and do that now. And then I'll come back when we get all the likes up. To, we've got almost 400 people in the chat room. Y'all got to go ahead and make it happen. So go ahead and get the likes up. And then I'll be right back and we will start the interview. Okay? Go ahead and do it. Get the likes up. Be right back. Welcome back to the broadcast. This is Dennis Sperling. And uh, as promised, uh, I'd like to welcome a young lady who uh, who has uh, been waiting for a while to uh, speak her piece. And I'd like to say thank you for coming. Uh, Would you like to introduce yourself, ma'am? Yeah. So thank you for having me. My name is Hortensia Alcantara. And, you know, I, I grew up in the state of Kansas, and I'm currently a full-time travel nurse. And I'm just, just a little nervous. <laughs> a little nervous, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you, like I told um, like I told these folks here, I, I tried to talk you out of this because you don't owe these folks any explanation, you know. As far as I'm concerned, and those of us who uh, truly appreciated Kevin Samuels, um, you know, you're a hero and we appreciate what you did for him, you know, in, in, in his last moments. Um, 
Either way, so, and I believe you, you pronounce your name Hortensia Alcantara, is that right? Yes, it's, it's Hortensia Alcantara, but okay. the English version, I have to say Hortensia. Okay, okay. So uh, you're from you, the Midwest, you said, what, what was it, Kansas? Yeah, I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, okay. I grew up in Kansas. Now, how did you get a name like Hortensia Alcantara and live in Kansas? Because people from Kansas <laughs> Rhonda and Becky <laughs> and Linda. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> well, well, Hortensia actually is a flower, but it's a Spanish. Okay. It's a hydrangea flower. Okay. And my grandma used to have a lot of a lot of Hortensias, uh, you know, and so my mom decided to to name me after that. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And, I, and I'm assuming you're of uh, Latino heritage with Alcantara as your last name. Now, how many last names do you have? Because I've, I'm only, <laughs> I've only met one Just Latino one. woman with about everybody got like four or five last names. Man. No, just just one, just one. My parents are uh, Mexican. They're oh, Mexican, cool. so I'm Mexican American. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, either way, like I said, I'm live here uh, on my broadcast. And uh, right now, only the subscribers can make comments. So if you guys want to comment, you're going to have to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, my moderators, we got we got like Rottweilers and pit bulls in here. We, we regulate the chat room. So it's only respect allowed on this page. So we don't want any any foolishness. This is for the Kevin Samuels fans. Hit the KS button. Um, you know, uh, so here's the thing. Let's just get straight into it. Hortensia. Um, mm -hmm. how did you meet Kevin? How'd you meet Kevin Samuels? So Kevin and I met through my brother who admires Kevin. Mm -hmm. I, I had seen a couple of Kevin's videos, but not enough to really fully understand the platform he had created. Okay. And after we first met, we kept in touch over FaceTime and started to get to know, know each other a little more that way. Mm -hmm. You know, our conversations mostly consisted of work and family. We also had conversations about what we were looking for, and, and Kevin knew that I was dating with intent to marry. Mm -hmm. So he had mentioned, you know, working on a relationship, but I never knew how serious he was until he actually, you know, we actually met in person. And okay. later he explained that he had run a background check, you know, to make sure I wasn't crazy before moving forward. So I joked about that and told him that it was a little slow down, slow down. So he ran a background check on you? Yes, that's what he told me, and I was like, <laughs> I told him he was crazy. Oh man, so he's checking for warrants and, and 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 whatnot to see who you are. I believe he ran a background check on me and everybody else that he associated with. That sounds like him, you know. <laughs> that is funny. Mm -hmm. So he ran a background check on you. Okay, all right. And so yeah, then, and, I, and I and I and I and I joked about it too because uh, I told him, yeah, you know, I just have a couple of felonies under my belt, and he started laughing because he's like, I know uh, you're a nurse, you can't have those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, he, you know, the funny thing is, Kevin had his own sense of humor. You know what I mean? You had to be around him enough to get it. But yeah, that sounds like, it sounds like him. Yeah, he's, I, I, that's funny. So, um, okay, so you said your conversations consisted of like, you just say work and family and you let him know you want mm -hmm. to get married. Is that what he wanted? I mean, what, what was, I mean, you know, I don't want you to go too deep into your personal friend, you know, relationship, and what y'all mm -hmm. talked about, but like, just what was his mind when he was speaking to you? No, of course, like he came off as, you know, he asked me what I wanted. And so he, ever since, you know, I stopped working so much, I, I always told, you know, people I'm, I'm, I'm dating with, you know, intent to, to be married. That's what I want. And I always put it up front so people know and, you know, not to waste anybody's time. Okay. And he had mentioned, you know, that he, he had wanted to work on a relationship, but never, like I said, never, I was never, I never understood how serious he was until I, I met him. And he told me that he always wanted to remarry and have a son. And, you wow. know, that he wanted to, he wanted to be married, but he was always looking for someone like me, you know, someone humble from the Midwest and that could have nice things, but didn't need them. So, so he wanted to have, he wanted to have a son because I know he has a daughter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I've actually spoken with his daughter on several occasions. She's actually 
kind of handling business for him now. She just graduated from college. Um, wow, yeah, so he has, I know he had a daughter. I, man, wow, little Kevin Jr., that'd have been something else, little KS Jr. Uh, so uh, <laughs> y'all talked all about that? He already, did you tell him that's not your job to give him the son or not? He had to figure that out on his, he had, it was his job to do that? Yeah, no, that's what he told me. He's like, well, he's like, can you have, you know, yeah. can you have a male? And just joking around. And I was like, well, that's that's up to you. That's up to right. <laughs> that's up to the male to produce that. You know, uh, but now he, he really he always talks about, you know, his daughter and his mom and how much, you know, he loved them. And, but he also wanted to, to have a son. Yeah, it's my understanding. They had a really close relationship. You know, I. So they, I mean, oh my God, his mom, she'll have such a sweet woman and the daughter is just, just so humble and sweet and, you know, just, just sweet people, you know, it's just, it's easy to do stuff for women like that, you know, and, and that's what I found. Like, you know, she just had, the mom had, she had my heart, you know, for about a, she's the type of mama everybody wished they had, you know, uh, Miss Beverly. So shout out to Miss Beverly. And she's just such a sweet woman. Um, and then of course his daughter is just a sweet girl and I could see why he would like you because you kind of got that same vibe going. Um, but anyway, um, so what, what did you, how did y'all, uh, I guess y'all talked on the phone. Y'all did FaceTime. Well, look, so he checked you out mm -hmm. first, right? Did he ask you those famous questions? He always asks people. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me do it. I'm gonna let me do my KS. Hold on a minute. Hold on. So you're you're dating with the intent to marry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's what's your dress size? A four. <laughs> a four. Okay. And uh, let me see. How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten? And you can't use seven. Honestly, um, I would I would tell myself five, maybe six with the makeup. Five or six. Mm -hmm. but that's i don't know that's just me okay and what did kevin tell you when you said you were five or six he looked I've at me and he said i was of you before you know uh, <laughs> go ahead he looked at me and said i was crazy and that um he's like well pretty girls you do like that they don't understand and i was like i don't i don't know i just i've always felt that way <laughs> let me see you know what actually i think let me see you sent me some pictures to hold on a minute. Let me see if I can find these photographs that you sent. This is what, what did you rate yourself as again, ma'am? I say, I say five or six with makeup. She said she's a five or six with makeup. Let's take a look. Fellas. Uh, let me, let me take a quick commercial. I'm gonna pull these pictures up to see if I wonder what Kevin said. Let me hold on a minute. We're going to be right back. You guys take, Give me a minute, I'm gonna pull these pictures up. Y'all hit the number one button. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. All right, so I have the photographs of Miss Hortensia Alcantara, who says, you said you are, you said you are four or five, is that what you said? I think five and a six with makeup. A five or a six with makeup. I'm I'm looking. Uh, fellas, all my guys in the chat room, this young woman rates herself as a five or a six. Uh, Kevin Samuels laughed when when she said that to him, and. Uh, uh, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you that you are a five or a six. I think you sent me one more picture. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let's see. That's you. So you're, and I don't know if you can see the screen, but you rate yourself as a five or a six. I don't do relationships. I don't rate women, but I don't, I think, you know, five or six might be a little low in my opinion. None of my business. I don't do that. But uh, the guys, guys, what do you, what do you rate Miss Hortensia uh, as here? Because I, this ain't what I do. I do boxing and 
lifting weights and raising boys and stuff like that. So I'm not going to, uh, I, I think it's more than a five or a six, ma'am. Cause if this is a five or a six, it's some big wide back heavy heifers out there. It's negative 10 right now. You understand me? So, uh, that's all I'm gonna say, but, uh, either way, that's cool. Appreciate it. I see what, you know, you, you definitely got that wholesome all American look thing going, but either way, enough of that. So, <laughs> So, okay, so he, so babe, we'll figure you met his requirements. You, you passed the, the, the test, right? I think so. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you passed the background check. You did the FaceTime. He probably, you know, checked you out here and there to, you know, caught you at a different time, see what you look like. And then uh, y'all some kind of way figured out your first meeting, right? So tell us about mm -hmm. that. So at the time I was working in Texas, but I was between contracts. So I had some free time before my next start date. Okay. So then I, I flew, I flew to Atlanta and we met, you know, at Buckhead village and that's Buckhead, where he showed me around. And Buckhead village. I, I think that's, that's where he was living at the time where he was renting that, uh, what was it VRBO or something like that. Okay. All right. And, uh, okay. So y'all, uh, so you, you say you flew, what, what did you say? You were between contracts. What does that mean? So um, I'm a travel nurse, so I can pick up contracts with different hospitals. And mm. at the time, you know, I, was, I wasn't I was working. It was between contracts and my contract, which is in Tennessee now, mm -hmm. um, didn't start until, you know, three weeks after. So I had enough time to go and actually meet him. So, I mean, I'm assuming it was pretty serious because I know Kevin well enough to know. Here's a couple of things. I don't know if you know this, but uh, the night or the day before, whatever y'all got together, he sent me a text message. And I'm looking at this last text message he sent me. And I, I see how excited he was. Let me see if I can pull this up. And I'm going to read it to you just so you know. You know, because this one thing what, what, uh, uh, guys tell the ladies, you know what I'm saying? But it's mm -hmm. a whole nother thing when they start telling their friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. So let me see. He sent me, uh, let me see here. Oh man. Uh, yeah. It's hard to even look at this stuff over again. You know what I mean? But, uh, he said, uh, he sent me a picture of you from your um, your your Instagram page, right? And then my response yeah. was, uh, wow, gorgeous. And then he said, few pics, doesn't follow me, initial background check, initial background clear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that, was, that was a trip, you know what I mean? So, um, and, and give me a minute because I'm still kind of, uh, you know, I, I hadn't really had a chance to grieve either, you know? So yeah. uh, it's just kind of, I try to put stuff behind me, you know what I'm saying? And, and I try not to yeah. really think about things. And now I'm having, I'm sitting here live with all these people looking at me and uh, I had to catch myself real quick, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um anyway so uh the thing he said I, I found interesting here was um let me pull it up again he said um you don't follow him on instagram was that like a big deal that you don't follow him on instagram or or something like that or you don't follow his shows because you mentioned earlier you didn't you didn't really follow his program too much not really it was more of my my brother who was you know watched all his things and for me i had to watch a couple of things but i never really was into it like like my brother was like that and and on instagram i really didn't use you know social media i had a couple pictures but i never honestly i feel like i never really had time because i worked so much 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, when you become very successful, it, it's, um, you know, it gets very lonely, you know? And the thing is, and, and I can't speak for, for women, but I know after about 25 years old, when you become successful and your trajectory in life is, is easily plotted, you don't know why women are coming at you. You know, I remember when, um, I remember when I made my first million dollars in one year, you know, I was surrounded by friends. I used to think, oh man, all these people love me. You know, these people like me, mm -hmm. you know, these, all these people are around me. They love being around me. I'm this wonderful person. And then you realize just how lonely you are and how little you can trust people because everything changes when you become successful and it's publicly known. It's one thing to have money and nobody really knows it. It's another thing to have money and everybody knows it. And in my particular circle, family, friends, they all began to know I had money. So every other phone call was, what can you do for me? Can you loan me some money? Can you give me some money? And, you know, I don't know about, you know, well, I do know a little bit about Latino culture. You all are very close, typically, typically. Um, but in my culture, as far as me being a black American man, it's not really, we're not really as close as we used to do, be back in the day, you know? And so it's like these mm -hmm. same people who I hadn't heard from in years are hitting me up, asking me for cash, asking me what I'm going to do. What, what are you going to do for us? You see what I mean? So I understand what Kevin was dealing with and I can see why he would run a background check on you. Don't be offended. You know what I mean? But you know, you don't know why people are coming at you, you know? And yeah. I, and, and I, and like you not following, and I'm trying to put myself in his mind, you not following his content, you not following him on Instagram and not really knowing anything about him, confirmed to him that you just weren't in it for the glory and the prestige. The young people call it clout chasing. You know, really we, we call it attention seeking and, and whatnot, you know, I mean, so I, I could see why he was hesitant. You know, because I mean, you don't know. The man made like six, seven million dollars in like two years. You know, I, I the pressure he was under, you know. Did he ever did he talk about that with you at all? He did. He he mentioned, you know, that's that he liked that I was from the Midwest because he said that we kind of grew with a different mentality and mm. you know, like these material things, they were nice, but it's something that, you know, we don't really need like I didn't grow up with that so it doesn't really matter to me you know and and I don't like to talk about you know my salary but I I'm I do pretty well and I don't really buy these materialistic things because it doesn't matter to me like to me it's more about the experiences you know and he liked that yeah so you you got your own money is basically what you're saying yeah and you know and I work hard for it uh, respect yeah I, I'm sure especially as a nurse coming out of this uh this beer virus, beer virus and this lockdown and all of that, you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. you've had plenty of work. Um, of course. So, you know, so, you know, I mean, give me a minute. Let me take a little break. I got to get myself together. Okay. <laughs> give me a minute. I'll okay. be right back. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing and subscribing to the channel. And also, Hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. Pop. Hey, pop is not dead. 
hip hop is not dead. Colombia. All right, fellas, thanks. Amigo, que quiero que la oración apoyara en gran ola. All right, all right, all right. We are back. Welcome back to the broadcast with a special guest, Hortensia Alcantara. Um, so I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I had to take a little quick break for myself. I'm getting a little choked up. I'm all right. I'm back at it. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, so you, 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 uh, you, you, you decided to meet Kevin. Y'all decided mutually y'all gonna meet each other. So tell us what happened. You, Tell us how it happened. So we met at Buckhead Village, and then that's where he started showing me around and took me to his favorite barber and store, which was the, the Peak. Well, and, he, you know, say, the whole... What, okay, hold on. You said he took you to his favorite department store? Or you said fragrance store? The fragrance store, yeah. He really likes, the, you know, the fragrances and the candles. They sell, they sell so much there. It's, it was, it's really cute, and... And he showed me around and, you know, the whole time, Kevin was a gentleman the whole time. He carried my bag, just op opened the doors for me, always asking if I needed anything. He was very attentive. And that's, I really liked that about him. Okay. Okay. So you guys, he, were, go ahead. Sorry. Um, and so he also got a place for me to stay right across from his because he wanted me to feel comfortable when I was there. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, Okay, so he got a he got a place for you separate from his. So you was all right, so I guess everybody thought you were staying with him, but he got you he got you a place in Buckhead Village for you to stay? Yeah, across the street. He just he said that he just wanted me to feel comfortable. Oh, that's that's real cool and that's really nice. Um mm -hmm. Okay, and then so y'all uh and you were saying something about y'all went to the, what did y'all, what did y'all get at uh, Dupe, 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 Dupe Tech? Is that what it's called? Dupe Tech? <laughs> uh, I think it's pronounced Dupe Tech. Dupe Tech, yeah, okay. Well, that lets you know, I don't, yeah, you so know, I don't, I don't know the, the stuff, but I know one thing. <laughs> I was in New York with, with Kevin Samuels and spent 18 goddamn, $1,800 uh, on some, some, some damn cologne, some Creed. <laughs> and, and, and and some I ain't even want it, you know what I mean? But he said you 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 did good, Dennis. You you won. You did good. You did good today. I'm like I don't feel like I did good today, Kevin. I don't spend eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> on cologne. I can go to Walmart and get this for much less money. Okay, but <laughs> he was he, he was pretty confident that I had done good. So what did he get you to buy in in Duke Tech? Did he did he get you to uh, to buy something in there? Well, he was just throwing me around, you know, kind of mm -hmm. like showing me like the fragrances he liked and, you know, kind of asking me what I like. So we just, you know, looked around and, and after that, you know, um, he told me he had all these things planned for the week and he was excited to show me, you know, what Atlanta had to offer because that was my first time in Atlanta and he wanted to convince me to get my next travel assignment there. So hold on, so, man. You know, it, 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 somebody said this in the comments. They sound like uh, the Godfather was like a romantic type dude. He's yeah, I think boys. I really, I really feel, I really feel he was. He was very romantic and he was very respectful. And and you know, I feel like people don't don't see that. And but that's what the version I saw. You know, the Kevin I saw. So he opening doors for and, you and 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 taking you to the fragrance shops and the press. <laughs> he bought you a place. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And then you know during during one of our conversations he asked me how long it would take me um, to know if I wanted to marry someone, and I said uh, about six months. And then that's when he mentioned that you know that he always wanted to you know remarry and have a son like I told you, and um, okay. but that he was looking for somebody you know. Like me from the way it was. That's cool. So he, can, uh, so so for for you guys, I mean, that's something for us to know because, like you, like you see, um, like as a guy, I see how Kevin operates with other guys. You know, I'm hanging out with him in New York. Mm -hmm. and I'm hanging out with him in, in Miami, and and there were other ladies around, but I he he wasn't. I I didn't see him. You know, I, I mean, he was always a gentleman, but you know, we never knew that side of him. You know what I mean? So. That's a good lesson, fellas. So, Godfather was a gentleman. He's opening doors, and 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 I'm sure he probably carrying bags and and and, and got you a whole place uh, away from his place. 
just so you can have your own space. That's dope. I like that. I, that's classy. You know, and that's mm -hmm. that's what I yeah. like. Yeah, I like that. And and then when I try to carry my things, he, you know, he would be like, no, he's like, give me that. He's like, you're not going to carry anything. So I thought that was, you know, really thoughtful and sweet. And like I said, this is this is the Kevin I knew, regardless of how people want to paint a picture of him. This, this is the truth. Shout out to all the Kappas, man. Shout out to all the Kappas. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with black fraternities, but uh, Kevin Samuels was a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, the Nukes, the Pretty Boys. Uh, and uh, so that that goes. You know, like when I first found out he was a member of Kappa, I saw, I see why he's particular about how he dresses and how he carries himself. Kappas are very, you know, uh, very much so. And then the fact that he was able to give advice to the ladies like that, I, I can't, I don't have that type of patience, you know. I don't see how he sat up night after night and talked to all those ladies over and over. I just don't have that type of patience. I'm my fraternity is a little bit different. Um as far as the type of men that, that we bring in, we're very logical, straightforward. I mean, we got some cool alpha men, but for the most part, uh, you know, we 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 focus more on the business. So he's smooth. He was a smooth cat. That's what it sounds like to me. So what else? Mm -hmm. So what else y'all? So this was this would be y'all first day meeting and y'all went uh, to the fragrance store. And what else did you because this will be this is technically his last day on Earth, right? Yeah, so wow. we, he just showed me around. He was excited to show me that, you know, the shops around the area he lived in. We mm -hmm. went out, you know, to eat at, at the little restaurant there. And he, he told, you know, and he just kind of wanted to show me how nice it was because I felt like he was trying to convince me, you know, to move there. So, um, and, and I really told him, you know, I really was surprised that uh, Atlanta was so green and it, it was just so, so, so beautiful. And I never mm -hmm. had been, you know, I've never been to Atlanta. So, I kind of was letting him know, you know, I, I do think Atlanta is, is really nice and I might consider it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So y'all had a good, you had food, you enjoyed yourself. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so what else? I mean, um, I, I mean, mean, he had told me like everything that he wanted to do that week, you know, I was supposed to be there for a whole week and he had all these things planned to like, go show me, you know, what Atlanta, like I said, what Atlanta had to offer. And, unfortunately that didn't happen but that's that's yeah. what he wanted so he had a you saying he had a whole week planned for you guys yeah he wanted me to stay a whole week oh wow wow okay so y'all had dinner whatever i you know what else did y'all do i see here's a you know i peculiar thing about kevin whenever i went out with him i never saw him drink anything you know and I remember having to, cause you know, I can throw them back. You know what I mean? I don't mind getting faded. You know what I mean? That's what I like to do. I like to drink and drink wine and eat and enjoy a lot. But Kevin never really drank. Did he ever tell you about, I had my belief. I thought it was cause he had to kind of deal with cancer as a young man. And that kind of freaked him out. You know, uh, did y'all talk about yeah. that at all? Yeah, we did. We talked about, you know, his history and how he, had the you know Hodgkin's lymphoma and I let him know that my best friend actually had went through that and I you know helped her through that and you know made a a page for her to support her and everything and they had you know they went through the same thing and we kind of connected on that and I think ever since you know because he had that cancer before he was aware of you know not drinking alcohol or mm -hmm. doing these things that would be bad for his health and no he never drank alcohol in front of me he never told me about you know he told me he didn't really drink i don't really drink but i do like you know to have wine occasionally yeah but no he never he never was the type of person to, to want to drink alcohol yeah i i know yeah he, he didn't smoke cigarettes he didn't smoke cigars you know he didn't drink you know the man was like a teetotaler you know and and I guess that's why, like, you know, I, I have most, a lot of black men have a lot of cardiovascular issues. They go unchecked. We, uh, it wasn't until my fiance made me take my butt to the doctor's office that I realized I had high blood pressure, you know, and um, mm -hmm. it was basically like a silent killer is what they call it, you know. And uh, Kevin and yeah. I are only about four or five years separated in, in age. 
And uh, it, it's just a trip. I didn't recognize it. The headaches and the waking up in the morning with headaches is probably from what's that called when you you, you sleep bad at night? I forget what it's called. Uh, and uh, I, I forget what it's called. That um, darn it, I can't even remember the name of it. But bottom line is that also increases your your propensity for cardio or heart attacks. And it's something that is very Say again. I'm sorry. Are you talking about like sleep apnea? Sleep apnea. That's it. Damn it. Mm-hmm. That, and, and along with the with the, the heart conditions and the high blood pressure, something that Black American men have to deal with. And I could only imagine having fought cancer at at twenty something. How really particularly he could have been about his health, you know. So, uh, but anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent for a minute. Um, what else? No, you're fine. He did. He did talk about that, though, how difficult it was for him to have the motivation to get up every morning because he felt so sick and he, you know, lost so much weight and mm. he just felt terrible. But he had to find some motivation to get up every day. And he told me that, you know, by wearing suits and, and you know, and, and, and feeling, you know, looking good made him get some motivation to wake up every day. Oh, wow. So, so basically getting up. Okay. So part of his motivation for going through and pushing forward, cause I know the man was tired. I met the man. I met him a couple of times. I talked mm-hmm. to him a couple of times. Kevin Samuels was tired and I've been at that point before. I know, I know just how he is. You, you, it's a burden that black men, especially black American men carry that nobody understands other than black men who carry that same burden. And I know what it's like, you know, it's like you, no matter how high you rise, you still are looked at like you're no good N word, you know, and then there's the health issues and then you can never do enough. You see, if Kevin Samuels was a white dude, he'd have a talk show uh, at night, uh, you know, next to those other great ones right now. You see what I mean? But, um, you know, it, it's just a different burden that we have to bear as black men. And it gets it, it gets tiresome. And that's why this this YouTube thing that we call Black Manosphere or, or, or the Manosphere is so helpful because it presents black men with an opportunity to talk to other black men and men in general so that we can kind of uh, recognize that we're not out here on our own. You know, because before I discovered this whole Manosphere thing, man, it, you it's like being in a spaceship by yourself. But anyway, mm-hmm. so what else did you guys talk about? But that's interesting that you let, let us know that part of his motivation to keep pushing was the fact mm-hmm. that he would get up and get dressed. And, you know, that was part of his, yeah. his, his thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reason he told me that he became an image consultant because that was so important for him to get through, you know, his cancer. Um, and I told him, you know, that I was proud of him for pushing through because a lot of people just want to give up. And yeah. and I told him, I just told him, you know, let him know that I was proud of him for, for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's uh, very interesting. You know, you never know a person's motivation and, um, you know, it's just like you wish you could have talked to him another couple more times, you know? Mm-hmm. That, that's my thing I just, man you know but um anyway so just let's finish i guess uh this is we're talking about his last day so yeah. uh what happened after that y'all I guess y'all had dinner and then what yeah so he showed me around we had dinner and then that night he had a show that he was going to do and and i was going to show up at his place but i was you know i arrived late because i'm always late to everything <laughs> And that's why he started his show late. Woman, late to show up. Go ahead. So then I arrived to his apartment late, and you know when I got there, I didn't know his whole setup. So I just you know stayed in the in the corner of the room. I was doing you know I got my laptop. I started you know doing my my work on, on the laptop, and later I decided to get up you know get some water, and that's when I accidentally walked in front of in front of one of his cameras and that's when he stopped me and I realized his setup. Oh, okay. 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 I, okay. Hold up. Hold up. So this is the part where everybody was making a big deal because you're at, yeah. uh, we're going to take a commercial. Y'all go get the likes up. If y'all want to hear the rest of this story, 
I want all the likes to be hit, okay? Hit the like. I'm gonna make them pay for this one. Hold on, Hortensia. Y'all wanna hear the rest of this story? Uh, what? How the whole walking into the camera thing happened? Y'all get the likes up. I'm not budging. Get the likes up. Hit the number one button. Get the likes up. Hit the KS button. We are gonna do it for the algorithm. In the meantime, y'all gonna sit here and look at me, look at y'all, okay? That's what's gonna happen. Get the likes up. We got a thousand people in here. If you want to hear her, hear Hortensia explain what happened, you know, with the whole the camera thing, right? He was live and something happened. Y'all want to hear the backstory? Y'all get the like toast. Shout out. Everybody say, what in the French toast? <laughs> Everybody put French toast in the <laughs> chat room. French toast in the chat room, man. Let's get that French toast popping. Uh, in the chat room, everybody say French toast in the chat room. Y'all want to hear the rest of this? We got another 200. I need another 200 likes. 200 likes, 200 likes. Get the thumbs up button. Put French toast in the chat room, man. What the French toast? <laughs> French toast, man. That's funny. Hit the French toast button, man. Come on. KS, French toast. We need another 200 likes. I wish I had some annoying music. I wish I had some annoying music to play for these people. <laughs> like Kevin used to play that. Bow, wow, 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 wow. And that's what I need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need some wow, 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 you know. Um, it was somebody saying good lies, some of these other things. Yeah, yeah. What? Come on, come on now. I need another 200 likes. Y'all gonna get these likes up, man. We're not playing this game. That's what we're gonna do up in here. I'm gonna make you pay. All right uh money world hit hey money world everybody type money world in the chat room come on money world in the chat room let me get get some of that money world come on let's get it this is for the kevin samuels fan uh, uh, hit the ks button all is kevin sam not the haters this is not for the haters and like i said before all this is copywritten if you use any part of this you're gonna get a copyright strike or you might get sued this is the property of dennis sperling it's all copywritten don't take it without express written uh, permission or uh, your channel is going to get booted. How about that? But um, anyway, all right. So we are almost there. I need another 50 likes and then we'll start back. Come on, let's get these 50 likes popping. We'll start back. PhD song. The man, or the dude was funny. The dude had, I'm a PhD. All that stuff, that <laughs> stuff was hilarious. Roof, roof, all that. Guy was hilarious. All right, what in the French toast? French toast. We get some more French toast. We need another 30 likes. Another 30 likes. And then we'll start back with Hortensia. Okay, but y'all gonna get these likes up. This is not even what I wanted to talk about today, Hortensia. I wanted to talk about that young lady who told her baby daddy that he needed to bring McDonald's for all their kids. Okay? <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. That's the conversation I wanted to have. We're going to sit up here and figure out how do you divide a Happy Meal into four different uh, pieces so all those kids could be happy. That's what I, I didn't want to talk about this, okay? Not what I wanted to have a conversation with, but you wanted to come. So I appreciate having you here. And uh, I'm sure Big Shirley is going to have something to say about this. Shout out to all the Big Shirley's <laughs> out there, all you wide back heavy heifers. Y'all was clapping because because the Godfather passed on the glory. Y'all still fat, out of shape, and bad built. How about that? Nothing's changed. But either way, Hortensia, so tell us the story. We're here with Hortensia Alcantara. She's the last person with Kevin Sammons before he went on to, uh, to glory, before he passed on. So there was this big deal about this image of you in his live stream go ahead and tell yeah. us about what happened so i i was getting my work you know on, on the corner of the room and then i got up to get some water but i since i had gotten there late i hadn't you know he hadn't explained his setup to me so i walked accidentally walked in front of one of his cameras and that's when he you know suddenly stopped me and i realized that I realized the setup and so I honestly thought he was recording from the camera on his computer and there was another camera by his desk. Mm. But, you know, it wasn't to me it wasn't like a huge deal. Like everybody was making it seem because even after he finished his video, he told me he wasn't upset that he was just trying to protect me and 
because he knew how nasty people could be and, mm. and didn't want that for me. And that's one of the reasons why he kept his family so private. Yeah. And he actually thought it was, it's, yeah, he thought it was actually funny because he's like, you know, these people that don't like me are always calling me gay and always insulting me. And now they're, you know, they're going to be wondering why there's a woman in the video. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's, let's, let's analyze that a little bit. So you, you had come over from your place cause you were, you were, mm-hmm. I, I, he had got you somewhere else to stay near him across the street. I think he said, and so you were late, typical female late, you know, <laughs> you got to, you late. That's all right. I'm gonna deal with you. And so you showed up late. So you had to kind of what stay in the corner. Like, oh, so you couldn't really pass through the room, I guess. I don't know the setup, but you couldn't pass through the room without being seen and he had always yeah. oh, okay go ahead yeah so there was there was some space and you know behind the camera but there was like a i forgot if there was like a table or something there so that's why uh-huh. i went that way but you know i didn't realize it until i was you know in half the frame and, mm-hmm. and so what 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 did he say when uh what did he say when you when you popped in his little camera He's like, no, he's like, please stop. <laughs> like he was, he, I think he was, like I said, he was just scared that he just didn't want me on video because he told me, he's like, you just don't understand how these people are. Like they will tear you apart, you know, for no reason. And like, I, I didn't really understand what he meant, you know, until this happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're pretty vicious, you know, and it, it takes somebody with a certain mentality. Kevin and I dealt with these folks differently. Kevin ignored the haters. I attack the haters because, you know, I, I enjoy it. Like they want to fight. I'll fight with them. I enjoy it. And, you know, I, I have the advantage because I know who they are and how to get to them, you know, and they don't know too much about them. I'm, I'm pretty hard to hit. And when they do, they still got to deal with these, these hits that are coming back. Kevin was different than I was, you know, he's different. He's a, he was a different kind of person. Um, and so I, I see why he would want to protect you because he's done the same thing for his mom. You know, his mom didn't even know he was famous. Did you know that? Honestly, I didn't. I, I felt like he had to mentioned it one time. Like mm-hmm. he's like, well, my mom's kind of like, you know, a small town, you know, lady. She just kind of keeps herself and oblivious, obviously, to, to the facts of like who he was. But I feel like that's, us Midwestern people right. kind of keeping to ourselves. <laughs> and, and, and then a lot of people, um, a lot of people, they don't even know. There's some young lady on the internet that's wearing these glasses that's pretending like she's Kevin Samuel's daughter. And people don't even know mm-hmm. what Kevin Samuel's daughter's looking looks like. So they think whoever this young lady is is his daughter. It's like that, that like that she's a kind of like a light brown skinned young lady. Kevin Samuel's daughter is a dark skinned young girl, you know, Mm -hmm. but they don't even know what she looks like. So I could see why he would want to keep you safe. But, uh, but anyway, so what happened after that? You, you accidentally passed through the, through the, uh, through the camera and, and and what, what was, what did he say then? Yeah. So, you know, like I told you, he told me that he just wanted to protect me, that he didn't want, you know, what, people could he said people could attack him all day and he could he could take that but he didn't want that for me yeah Um, because he knew he knew he probably knew how stressful and everything you know all that was but after you know after his show um when he was done recording we started watching one of his favorite shows um which is called the island you know so after the show okay okay hold on a minute i want to so you finished y'all ate dinner you went you went back to your place and then you came back over he was doing the show and then mm-hmm. you said y'all were watching something. So this is late in the evening. This is his last evening with us. So what we'll do is mm-hmm. it's something I have to do. Okay. I don't know if you know okay. this, but I'm hood. I'm hood is the front of a car. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm Kevin, I'm Kevin Samuels ghetto friend. Okay. And so I do ghetto <laughs> things. I like ghetto trends. And so what we're going to do right now is something that I call roll call. Shout out to everybody who has been on my channel for a minute. Shout out to all the low riding, uh, 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 weed smoking, (laughs) hood throwing up, ghetto kids who grew up and did something special with themselves. What we about to do right now 
is we're about to have roll call. So big shout out to all the people who've been here. Let me know where you checking in from. We know we got Kansas City on the phone. What's up, Kansas City? How you doing? Kansas City or Tennessee? We go, she's on the phone. But I need to know where you checking in from. Go ahead, UK, Miami. Check, rep your hood, rep your neighborhood, baby. We going to do it all good. Here we go. Let's see it. West side for life. Hey, I'm about to show you something. Oh man, y'all see me up there with the with the blue croaker sacks and and, and the swap meat socks, man. <laughs> That's Uncle D. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize for being ghetto. I apologize, I, but that's just how I was raised, man. Oh man, but big shout out to everybody who's checking in. We got Raleigh, North Carolina. Who else we got up in here? Maryland, Washington, Orlando, San Jose, California. Atlanta, Georgia, Malaysia. We got Malaysia in the house. Shout out to Malaysia. Be more Akron, Ohio, Seattle, New Jersey, NYC, baby, Nottingham, UK. They got they whole, they got like Robin Hood. We got Robin Hood's people calling in. H Town, of course. Shout out to H Town, Denver, uh, uh, DMV. That is, uh, let me see, DC, Maryland, Virginia area, UK, Atlanta, Georgia, North Carolina, North Kakalaka, Washington. Uh, Chi Town is in the house, Pennsylvania's uh, DR is in the house, Fort Worth, Inglewood, <laughs> but that's the that's the Illinois Inglewood. Uh, hey, let me see who else we got. Detroit, big shout out to Detroit, Seattle, San Diego, uh, Bay Area, NYC, Connecticut. Who else we got, man? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Let me say VA, Laker Nation. That's what's happening, man. I used to stand out on uh, Manchester. When the Lakers would win the game, when they used to be in the form, my little badass cousin, and 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 give a shout out to all the Laker fans heading to the uh to the to the uh freeway, man. Four four slaw my mom, hold on Aurora, Aurora, Colorado, but but L.A. bred Crenshaw and Sloss, and that's what's happening. Man. I used to give him some good T-shirts off Slint Crenshaw and Sloss when I was a youngster. Orlando, Florida, Jersey, New Orleans, that's what's up. West Dallas, Harlem. What's up? Uptown is in the house. What's happening uptown? Harlem. Uh, all of us, all the pretty ninjas are from, right? That's what they say, right? The pretty ninjas. What's the rapper name? Of you? Australia. Wow. We got Australia. Okay. Saudi Arabia. Damn, they deep. Hortensia. They want to, you hear this, Hortensia? We got Saudi Arabia and Australia in the house. You hear what I'm talking about? That's deep. Wow. I know. Canada. Who else we got up in the Ukraine? Y'all better be careful over there in the Ukraine. Okay, be careful. So keep your head down. Belgium. Uh, who else? Oklahoma, Hackney, London. Oh, wow. Philly is in the house. Uh, Venice is in the house. Um, North Side H Town <laughs> is in the house. That's what's up, man. That's what I'm talking about. Pensacola, Florida. That's one of my favorite uh, military towns. Pensacola. Shout out to Pensacola, India. Uh, this is all good, man. Y'all hit the KS button, man. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. I appreciate you guys. Uh, hit the KS button. Shout out to KS. This is for all the Sweden is here. India, that's what's up. Rochester, New York. So we're back with Hortensia Alcantara. This young lady uh, uh, was the last person with Kevin Sam. Well, you know, hold on a minute. Before I get started, 
Y'all need to get the contributions up. What's happening with that, man? Y'all got me in here wasting my time on a Friday when I could be golfing or doing something that I really want to be doing. This is my day off. Okay, so y'all get the, get the likes up and get the contributions up. Y'all go ahead and let's get that popping. I need 10 on 20, 5 on 10, 2 on 15, whatever you're going to do. Make sure y'all get the contributions. Somebody said we broke. Ah, y'all ain't got y'all checks yet. <laughs> That's what's happening. Uh, it's all good, baby. Y'all, man, show your love and appreciation, man. This has been a hard week, man. But um, anyway, so um, now we're getting down to the – Last few hours, uh, Hortensia, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, he finished his show, and then you were telling us he was watching. Uh, um, Y'all were watching. The, well, tell us what happened then. So we were watching The Island, which was one of his, his favorite shows. The Island? And then, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And he liked nature shows, which is weird because he didn't, you know, like anything outdoors. <laughs> I told him I thought that was weird because I'm a very outdoors person. So, but he liked to watch it. <laughs> he so let me so let me so he he liked watching out. Okay, I, run that by me again. Tell me again what you were saying. So he likes to watch outdoors shows like mm -hmm. the island or you know other outdoors shows, but he didn't like outdoors activities because he didn't <laughs> like the heat. <laughs> so he liked watching outdoorsy shows, but he didn't like going outdoors. Mm -hmm. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, so he was kind of like living, living through them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, but you know it's hot down there. It's hot down south, especially like Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia. Right, right about now, Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, anywhere along Alabama, Mississippi, it's hot. I can see why he wouldn't want to go outside. Um. Uh, okay, so then, so so tell us, y'all watching the island? Okay, and and that is that the show where the women and the men are separated and they have to compete or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, yes, I think he put like uh, one of those episodes where it was like men versus women on the island mm. and like see who who can survive better, you know. And that's his. I was just commenting on it, and I just you know let him do his thing and watch the show. <laughs> You know, the thing is, like, Kevin would, like, what I found out from his friend Jeff is that Kevin would, like, watch, he would watch me. He would watch uh, Lead Attorney. He would watch Obsidian. He would watch BGS. And these are all people from uh, MTR, another guy. He would watch all the really good YouTubers, and he would analyze us. And he could he would figure out what it was that we were saying, and then he would break it down. And he would do the th same thing with television shows, you know, he had been taking psycho psychology classes and really studying and working so that when he began to have these interactions with uh, the public, he would be ready for him, you know? Um, so I could see how him watching a show with uh, men versus women would be something that he would find interesting because he would then use that dynamic and come back and break it down uh, during his shows and whatnot. You see what I'm saying? So uh, mm -hmm. that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so what else happened then after that? Y'all watched the show, then what? Yeah, so so we were watching the show, and then after that, you know, that's when we fell asleep, and then that's when everything, you know, just spiraled. So that early morning is when Kevin, you know, went into what I believe was cardiac arrest. All right, so we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about his his last morning and and uh, when when we believe Kevin went into cardiac arrest. So y'all uh, y'all get the likes up, man, and uh, we'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button, and uh, you know we'll we'll go ahead and try to keep this thing moving along. But y'all make sure y'all get the contributions up. I'll be right back. Hola. Hola. Ella es mi um hermanos de Colombia, sí. el nombre es de, de Palanca, Jinta Palanca, explain for me. Diana, Ana. Yeah. Ana. Ella es su hermana, sí. vivo aquí, aquí en Colombia, ¿no? Sí, sí. Raza Palenquera. Ah, Palenquera. Sí. ¿Dónde está, uh, dónde está Palenquera? Juan María La Baja. Okay. Gracias, gracias. gracias.
All right, already. What's happening, you guys? This is back. This is Dennis Sperling, uh, and I'm back with uh, Hortensia Alcantara. Now, again, as I said before, this is all copywritten. Uh, you see the copyright running on the bottom of the screen. You are not permitted to re-permit this broadcast, not even a snippet, without my express written consent. If you do so, you will receive a copyright strike. Uh, I will hunt you down. Even if you think you're going to get away with it, I will hunt you down and I will strike your channel and I will enjoy doing it. Uh, because you have to, we're going to have to learn some respect on YouTube. The thing that I want to do, especially amongst black YouTube is we're going to have to create some, 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 some comity, some respect. That's what we want here. I want people to show respect for each other. You know, right now, a lot of you guys are like, you like cannibals. You have no talent. And so instead of being content creators, all you do is remark or make uh, uh, reactions to other people's content. That means that you are talentless and you have no skill. But what I'm going to ask you to do, what I'm going to force you to do is challenge yourself to use your creative minds and begin to create your own content. And unfortunately, some of you all cannot be merely asked. Some of you all have to be taught a lesson. So that being the case, I'm going to start here. You comment on this. Uh, you try to make a reaction video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you stricken from YouTube. And as you guys know, if you get three of them, you're done. So all that hard work of trying to get your channel up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand. All that's out the window. You got to start all over again. And that's going to mess with your pocket. It's going to mess with your money. So what I'm asking you guys to do is show respect to each other starting here. Okay. That's what I want. You guys who've been on my programming, you see how very respectful and how very patient I am with people. And that is what I want for you all. You know, you want to be a teacher of the people. You want to be someone who gives good lessons to people. Start off by showing respect. The thing that we need, and I'm, I'm going to have a blackity black moment, okay? All right, excuse me, Hortensia, and all the Kevin Samuels fans. I need a blackity black moment. I need to talk to my people for a minute. The thing that black people have the worst is a lack of unity. But you can't unify with people who are disrespectful. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach each other respect. The, me, the reason that we have so many issues amongst black men in the black community and why we have so much violence is because we don't respect each other. I don't care if you love me. You don't have to love me. You don't have to like me. But what I want you to do is respect me and respect yourself. This is where we are. Okay. It's unfortunate that I have to take this role. You know, I, I don't want to be the regulating force on uh, YouTube and I can't regulate all of y'all, but I can regulate what you do here. Show respect to each other because the rest of the world is looking at us act a fool on the internet. Look how they trounced upon Kevin Samuels. The man had not committed any crimes. The man hadn't sold any drugs. The man hadn't done any criminal activity. The man was a good man. He was a father. He was a hardworking man. He was an educated man. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and the fact that he was, you know, his character was assassinated by his own people. See, that's the thing. His own people. It wasn't white people and Asian people and Latino people out there disrespecting Kevin Samuels when he passed away. It was his own black people. It wasn't even Africans or West Indians or, or, or people from the Caribbean. It was black American, ADOS, FBA people disrespecting him. Same thing happened with Kobe Bryant. And the funny thing is those same people who are non-FBA, non-ADOS, are now taking Kevin Samuels' talking points, and they're going to make millions of dollars. It's a young lady right now on YouTube. God bless her. I think she calls herself Fem Sapien or something like that. She's filling in where Kevin left off. It's a lot of other YouTubers that are taking up his talking points. Y'all hated him. Right? That's what it looks like. You own people. So it's like, well, we'll take this. Is They did the same thing with jazz. They did the same thing with blues. 
This is where we are. They're going to do the same thing with hip hop. Y'all wanted to move out the South and move to the big cities. Those white companies and farmers came in and swooped your land up. You wanted to move out the ghetto. Now they you, you mad because they re-gentrifying the ghetto, but you moved out to the suburbs and then they moved back in. You, when you abandon something, you say you don't like it no more and then somebody else comes in and take it. You can't be mad at that. That's what they're doing to us. We're going to teach you folks some respect. I want respect. Respect is the most important thing. You may not, as far as unity and getting along with each other. And when you black men start respecting each other and black women start respecting each other, then black men and black women can start respecting each other. And then we'll have less of the issues that we have now. But until then, this is what we're going to have to do. So that was my blackity black moment. We're going to get back to the interview, but y'all go ahead and get the likes up. Um, you know, and and I don't know how Kevin uh, or Tensi, I don't know how Kevin dealt with all the disrespect they got. I, I, I'm not here for that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I honestly don't know how he yeah. dealt with that. That would be really stressful for me. Yeah, I mm-hmm. got smoke for him. I got I got I got copyright strikes and lawsuits for him. But uh, either way, so we're now at his last few moments here. Uh, I'm, it's the follow, uh, the following morning, is it? Yeah. So the next morning, um, you know, I, I heard him grunting and what seemed to look like he, you know, that he was having some chest pain and he fell over on my shoulder and I, that's when I shook him and I asked him if he was okay and he didn't respond. So, you know, I started panicking and, and was confused about what was happening because everything happened so suddenly and it was so early in the morning. Um, you know, but then, you know, the nurse in me kicked in and that's when I checked to see if he was breathing. And then I checked his carotid for a pulse. And, you know, and that's when I knew that moment that I needed to do CPR. So I started looking around, you know, for a cell phone while I laid him on the floor. And Kevin's a heavy guy. He's tall. And I don't, you know, people don't understand that he was over six, six feet. I'm only, you know, five, four. And so it was difficult, you know, for me to move him. And I went and grabbed my phone and I, I called 911 and I put them on speaker and then I started doing CPR. So, so, so much to unpack there. And I hate to have you revisit that. So you, you had to, you had to drag him onto the floor. Is that what you said? Yeah. And so like, I I had to drag him to the, to the floor for like a hard surface to do CPR. And he, mm. you know, he's a, he's a pretty heavy guy, but I feel like at the, at the moment you're not thinking about anything, but besides, you know, trying to, Kevin, to get the CPR going. And I'm six, five, Kevin's about six, five too. So he was probably about 200 some pounds, 225, 230. So yeah, I, I could imagine that being hard. Um, mm-hmm. So what happened after you got him on the ground and, and you start, uh, and, and I'm assuming you need a solid ground, or like something, because you're doing CPR, you're basically pushing somebody's chest to keep get their heart going, right? Yeah, so you need you know to get him on a flat surface to get that circulation going. And I, I, I called them when I put them on speaker and I started CPR. And, you know, while on the phone, I just remember, you know, I was, I was just so, so scared and just, you know, I can't believe this is happening right now to me. So I started, I felt like I started saying things that didn't make any sense, but because I was flustered, but, you know, my muscle memory took over and I was still doing, you know, CPR correctly. And, you know, after, after telling them the address, I just wanted to concentrate on giving him CPR. I wasn't concentrating on, you know, trying to answer all these questions and like using, you know, my energy and I needed, I felt like I needed to concentrate and I just felt really frustrated. Now, how long have you been a, a, a nurse, uh, Hortensia? I've been a nurse for about two and a half years. Okay. All right. And have you been in experiences or situations like this when people, have you administered CPR before? Or, I mean, in a situation, in of a course. hospital, I'm assuming. Have you had to do it before? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it happens all the time. It's just the the thing that people don't realize. It's it's so much different. Like you, 
don't have the resources you do when you, you when you're at the hospital. You don't have help. You know, you don't have the drugs. You don't have you don't have anything, and it's it's just so different, especially with somebody that you know and you care for, and it's it's just nerve wracking. So 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 let me see. Okay, so you had to drag him on the floor and you start doing CPR, and that is when you, for those guys who don't know, that's when you literally are pushing somebody's chest down. Well, and how long were you pushing, trying to administer CPR before, before the ambulance got there? Well, so I started doing, giving him CPR and at the time I wanted to, I wanted to believe he was breathing, but it was actually agonal breathing, mm. you know, which is, it's, it's gasping. It's not true breathing. And I wanted to believe he had a pulse, but he didn't. And so I knew he had an irregular rhythm. And I knew he needed, you know, an AED, which, you know, some people might ask, you know, what, what that is. And that's, it's an automated external defibrillator. And that's, you know, something that you use, um, it, it delivers a shock to help return, you know, the heart to a normal rhythm. And I knew he needed that. Is that, is that like, cause I mean, I've seen like the movies before. Is that the thing when they say they rub them together and they say clear, and then you put them on and makes them jump off the ground or something like that? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But now it's, you know, they're pads. So they go on your chest and that's what delivers the person, you know, who's in cardiac arrest. It's shock to get that heart back to a normal rhythm. Okay. And and I knew that without an AED, CPR was the, the best I could do without any resources. And so you, you basically down there on the floor doing CPR. Like I've, I remember they had us doing CPR in high school. Uh, and after about three or four minutes, I was exhausted. That's a workout. Like how long were you, yep. how long were you doing the, the CPR thing? And like, how long were you doing that before the ambulance got there? I, I remember doing CPR for, it seems like forever, but it was really for about 18 minutes. And I feel like people don't understand how difficult that is. You say 18 just, minutes? Yeah, it was 18 minutes. So you were doing you were you were there eighteen minutes administering CPR. Yeah, that's how long it took for for help to arrive. Wow. And so I mean, no, nah, I'm I'm telling you, after three three four minutes of doing it in high school, when they were trying to get us these, you know, they had those little plastic dummies and whatnot. I'm I'm tired after three or four minutes. Eighteen minutes. My yeah, God. it was eighteen minutes. And I, and I try to stay, you know, the full 18 minutes, but it's just, it's exhausting, you know, and I yeah. had to take a break, you know, it was a couple seconds and back to it because I just, I just told myself, you just have to keep going. Damn. All right. Let me, um, all right. So, um, wow. All right. So let me get my thoughts together. So, okay. So. Hmm. So the ambulance finally showed up. Then what happened? Mm -hmm. So the ambulance finally showed up and then they they took over and they started doing CPR. And um, at the time I was worried about <clears throat> his rhythm on the monitor. So when they hooked him up, I can see that he still had, he didn't have a pulse, but he still had a shockable rhythm. So, oh, okay. you he, know, that gave me- what? what did you call that? So it's, um, it's like electrical activity that your heart is still, you know, it's, it could, it could be shocked with an AED. So I saw on the monitor that he still had a shockable rhythm, which was good. And, a um, shock so, and I don't understand what shockable rhythm is. He still had a shockable rhythm. Is that meaning that like, usually when people flatline or, you know, their heart stops working, mm -hmm. you can't, and you can't shock them anymore, but, when he was on the monitor, it showed that he could still be shocked back into his rhythm if he had a chance, you know? So I, I took that as a good sign. So basically what you're telling us, you kept him alive to the ambulance got there. I, I tried my best. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what it's saying. They still, give me a minute, I'll be right back. Right now I'm in Boulevard Square in uh, El Centro, which is the downtown portion of Bogota, Colombia, 
And right behind me is the, um, basically just like the Justice Department. It's the place where all the uh, Supreme Court justices in Colombia are. So Pablo had been, they, the, the U.S., United States, and the Colombian government have been working together, and they gathered a bunch of evidence on him, and they had enough evidence to send him uh, back into the United States. In other words, he was going to be extradited. So what he did was he struck a deal with the, with the guerrillas and had them invade this place and take over and burned up all the evidence. Yeah, so uh, Pablo, can't escape the brother. He's off the chain. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead on out, and that right there is the Congress building. It's a beautiful square. It's a beautiful country. All right, so we're back. Uh, Hortensia, I just needed a little quick break, you know. Uh, there's a lot of wind in here right now blowing mm -hmm. in my house. You know what I mean, Hortensia? But it just dawned on me that you kept this man alive until the ambulance got there. Hortensia, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. It, it, you kept him alive until the ambulance got there. You know, you um, by yourself administering CPR early in the morning for 18 minutes straight by yourself screaming on the night, screaming on the inter screaming at these 911 people. By the way, I can't stand whoever that 911 operator was. I don't know who she was, but she needs to be relieved of her duty. But, you know, in my opinion, you know, just that alone makes you a hero. And I think I can say this on behalf of all the Kevin Samuels fans, just the fact that he didn't, he didn't, he didn't expire while he with you, that you fought to keep him alive says a lot. And so thank you for that alone. You know, um, he didn't die alone. That's another thing. He didn't die because he didn't die when he was with you, but either way. Uh, so what else have the ambulances there? And, you know, so what happened? So, yeah. After so that? Yeah. So the ambulance is there and, you know, I'm trying to just make sure that I'm watching the monitor and just hoping, you know, that he, he can, you know, fight through it. And that's when, you know, the cops came and, you know, um, started asking me questions. And I feel like people just don't understand and don't put themselves in my shoes. Like when somebody's trying to ask you about, your relationship or what's going on like you're not that's not your priority right now to answer these questions like my priority is to make sure that that he's he's going to be okay and you know for so for me that wasn't I, I really didn't care to answer these questions because it's like I I need to make sure he's okay first and then you can ask me everything you want at the hospital or yeah. whatever you know and so when I said like I don't know I don't know and I was saying you know that we just met it's like because we had just met in person but to me that wasn't my priority to me it was just making sure that you know he was going to be okay so these clowns that you told them you just met and they took it that y'all just met like that day or something like that not that y'all yeah they took yeah. they took everything out of context like it's it's i don't know it was just crazy it's like no, i said I mean, like it, when it, somebody is people take people take stuff and they run with it you you meant we just I just came here. I just got here. We just met in person yeah, today, but we've been yeah, talking just, on the phone for a minute. We've been FaceTime. Yeah, but you, you, right, right. Exactly. But you don't want to say all that because it's like when yeah. somebody's being worked on and, and they're asking you these questions, like you don't care right now to answer these questions. That's not important to you. Like what's important to me is to make sure that he's going to make it. Right. Like, like I said, like these questions can be answered later. So, so you ended up in the ambulance with them on the way. Tell us about the ride to the to the uh, to the uh, hospital. Okay, so they put Kevin in the ambulance, and you know, I, I grabbed I grabbed some of my things, and I I went with them, and I was sitting, you know, in the front, and so I just remembered I was so frustrated because I know they they have to drive at a certain speed, you know, so they can still be working in the back on him, but. I was telling the ambulance driver, I was like, can you, can you please drive faster? Like this is an emergency. And, and I, I feel bad now, but I just felt like at the time I was just frustrated and, and I was like, come on, let's get there quicker. And he told me, you know, he was like, I'm sorry, I just have to drive slow enough for them to do their job. And, and I was like, 
you know, I didn't say anything else, but I kind of was just like trying to rush him. Okay. Okay. So, so you up, you in the front seat yelling at the ambulance drivers to drive fast. <laughs> yeah, and I feel bad now, but it's just like uh, man, at the you, time you I was just like frustrated. A, hey, back in the day, we would say you sound like a rider. You're a rider. I appreciate that. You you was a rider. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> that's what's up. And y'all finally got to the hospital, and then and what happened when you got to the so, hospital? So we got to the hospital, and they, you know, he was in the ER, and they started working on him. Mm-hmm. And I was I was waiting there in the waiting room, and I and I wanted to go, you know, and and watch and watch them, but they wouldn't let me. They're like, no, you have to sit sit in, you know, where the waiting area. And I asked why. I was like, why can't I watch? And they they didn't allow me to. But you know, a couple of minutes later, the the doctor came and they told me that they were they needed to slow down on the on the CPR, and you know, and I told them I said no. I was like. It's his, I was like, his family isn't here. I was like, I haven't contacted his mom. I was like, you, you can't. I was like, keep trying. So he went back and they worked on him some more. Yeah. Yeah. So how much, uh, how much sleep you are? It sounds to me like, uh, it sounds to me like you did 18 minutes and how many, how much CPR did the, did the, uh, did the, uh, ambulance do? Um, honestly, I'm not sure, but they stayed there for a while. So it had to be at least around 30 minutes. Damn, so you got, you know, I do know this about CPR from practicing law. At a certain point, you endanger the person's rib cage. You know? Yeah. And also, you know, that person can have brain damage after a certain time. So it's not good to revive them because they'll have brain permanent brain damage. So that's, you know. Yeah. At what point did the cop, did the, did the, the, the doctor just, I guess you were at the hospital, you're in the emergency room, and they come out and tell you, like, that's it. At what point, how long, did they ever do that or whatever? They did. After, well, like I said, like, after after some time, they came and told me that they would need to slow down. And I said, no. So they went back. You know, he went back. And, and then later, which seemed like forever for me, um, he came back and he told me, you know, um, there's, you know, so, nothing. So you there's telling nothing me that the anything. doctor wanted to quit, and you, 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 you told the doctor to go back in and keep working on him. And yeah, he. Well, he told me, you know, like we. I feel like we should slow down after yeah. so much time that he's, you know, he's been getting CPR for this amount of time, and, you know, and I said, I said no. I was like, just keep trying, and you know. So he went back, and then that, later on, he just came back and told me that he couldn't do anything about it. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, okay, I'm back. This is Dennis Sperling. We're back. <clears throat> it's a tough conversation that we have in here. And um, you know, I um working on getting through it myself. Um Hortensia, are you okay? How you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, all right. So um so at some point the doctor called it mm-hmm. and uh that was it, I guess. Um I mean everything else is I found out I was sitting in my I was sitting in my kitchen table about two or three o'clock in that afternoon and apparently there was some blog, some blogger out of 
somewhere who told somebody about the 911 tape and then it got back to me and I start calling Kevin and calling his cell phone and um with no answer you know I just didn't believe it at mm -hmm. first but you know I have been kind of like numb you know because I just lost my father in November and um I lost my uh my role model, my guy that taught me how to practice law, a little short Jewish dude named Mike Began. I lost him in February. Um, and um, it just, I was, I'm still dealing with that, you know? And then this happens and um, it's kind of rough, Hortensia. And then yeah. that's when all the rumors started. You know, that, that, that's, you know, when, not yeah, that's when the rumor started, you know, and, and, and the family, I hadn't planned on saying nothing about it. Then the family contacted me and asked me to be the spokesperson. And then I had to deal with all this foolishness, you know, and I, I'm, and that, yeah. And honestly, that's one thing I want to like point out is that I wanted to contact his family and I wanted to contact, you know, his friends and, but the thing was that I regret that I didn't grab his phone and his wallet when I left. And I was begging them, you know, the, the police at the hospital, I was like, just let me go back and grab his things because they wanted to identify him. And I, and I, and I told him, I was like, I, I forgot his, I forgot to grab his things. I was like, can you just go back with me so I can grab his things and I can call, you know, whoever's on his emergency contact on his phone and they wouldn't let me go back. So, that's one thing that I, you know, that hurts that his mom had to find out online instead of me calling his family or his friends. Yeah, his mom had to find out about it because one of these loud mouth, no good sons of bitches on the internet decided that they was going to make an announcement before his mom even knew. You understand? And, and so on behalf of his family and all of his fan, fuck you motherfuckers. Excuse my French. But fuck all you insensitive sons of bitches for that. That was the most fucked up thing I've seen. And I know, you know, maybe I'm lashing out a little bit right now. But that was fucked up, man. Y'all robbed that man of his humanity. Uh, it's just, uh, just, Kevin's dead. Kevin's gone. But for his mom, Miss Beverly, to have to find out that he died from one of you clout chasing raggedy motherfuckers on the internet that's fucked up real talk and so fuck all you haters and that's why i don't have no problem striking your channels and suing your mother y'all you your asses and that's on everything real talk but anyway um hortensia i appreciate you uh i know there's a lot of rumors and stuff and i know they've mm -hmm. been dragging your name through the mud you a hero to me as far as i'm concerned you know, and I think anybody in here who listened to this story and uh, really wanted to know what really, really happened, you know, they, they can appreciate what you said, but go ahead and, and um, you know, if you want to talk about something, clearly you, they said you didn't do CPR. Clearly you did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I feel like they, you know, edited a version of this 911 call to, make it seem like I never did CPR or, you know, I didn't know the address or anything, but I gave him the address and I gave him the apartment number. Um, and I tried to do CPR, you know, the whole time, but it's, it's exhausting. Like, you know, it's, it's hard. Right. And then, and then the other thing was about, they want to, these for this don't even make sense to me. And I don't even do medical. You want this woman to run, like they wanted you to run downstairs Try to find mm -hmm. a shock machine in the morning. Oh, at at, at where were y'all at at the apartment complex, right? Like they just gonna have what do y'all call that again? Or AED? What is that called? AED. AED. Mm -hmm. Do you think your apartment manager has one of those shock machines in their office somewhere? I mean, just think. So you wanted her to leave Kevin and stop giving him CPR on the hopes of running outside and finding an AE. D machine. Like, are you serious? He wouldn't have been alive. 
when the when the ambulance got there. You understand? Like, isn't, am I right, Hortensia? Yeah, I felt like that's just something that you know is not isn't realistic. Like, I I don't know the apartment complex. You know, the front office is, is closed from what I know now, you know. And I feel like the best chances of him surviving was for me to stay there with him because, you know, after three to four minutes of no circulation, you know, his, he starts, somebody starts getting brain damage. So for me, that wasn't a smart decision to make and go run around looking for something when I can stay there and wait for help to arrive and, you know, continue the CPR. Right. Yeah, I mean that don't even that don't even make sense to somebody like me. Why would you leave? That's like I'm a like that's stupid. And whoever thought that up is stupid. And the, and the bullshit about drugs and this is a one night stand. Y'all full of shit. The man barely drank. The only time I ever saw Kevin drink was when I bought a bottle of Ace of Spade in Miami for his birthday. And I was like, man, drink a little bit. He's like, nah, I don't drink. I'm like, come on, man, this Ace of Spade is your birthday. Drink a little bit. He drank a little bit. I drank the rest out the motherfucking bottle. Okay. I got pictures, but, but the bottom line is the man didn't do drugs. You don't do drugs. Do you, do you do drugs? Any of that shit? <laughs> you, you smoking that medicinal no, I don't. or anything? No, we don't No, We never did drugs. I don't do drugs. She don't so do drugs. For people to say that, do drugs. It's crazy. You nasty, rotten ass motherfuckers are the ones out there smoking and, and popping pills and shit. Everybody does not have your value system. It wasn't a one night stand. Uh, she's clearly yeah. all woman. She's not an escort. Now, what about this other, this little fat Jamaican motherfucker named DJ Academics? Would you like to address him? Yeah. So I'm gonna you know, I guess ang- you were I'm saying that. Now. I just want you to know, I'm gonna, be <laughs> angry. I'm gonna be your angry translator. Go ahead. It's okay. So yeah, he, I guess he was saying that. You know, I asked him for some money, and that's not true. I have never spoke to this man. I, you know, I. I've never asked anybody for money so, and so, so for dude, him to so say dude, something like dude, that. Hold on. Let me slide back here. DJ Academics is this little, I don't know if it's DJ or whatever the fuck he is, but uh, he was out there telling people you had called him up or some allegedly had called him up or some old bullshit like that saying you had asked him for money or what? Yeah, I guess that's what he was saying, but that's completely not true. I've to, never to, talked to him. To talk to him. Mm-hmm. Just on, on, like on air I've, yeah so i've never i've never spoke to him yeah. so for him to you know talk ill about somebody he doesn't know is just so disrespectful and you know he was obviously speaking to somebody else and did i don't know i just feel like people would just say crazy things no he got he got he got apparently i mean this is you're telling us tell him this is your first and only interview con- uh, re- re- about this subject is that what you're saying the one you yeah, I've right never now. spoke to. Yeah, I've never spoke to anybody else about what happened that night. All right, so did and y'all I didn't hear plan that? to. Did y'all hear that? All you dumbass trolls out there! This is Hortensia Alcantara's first and only interview concerning this subject, and I hope it's your last, baby. You don't need to talk about this shit no more, okay? And I know you wanted yeah. to get it off your chest. She ain't. I'm not paying her a damn thing. I haven't offered her anything. She want if she wanted to talk about it. Here we go. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. but either way, uh, go ahead and finish, please. Yeah, so that's completely not true, and that's one thing that bothered me was you know people trying to paint this picture about me, and it's not fair and it's not right. Mm-hmm. It's not. You're right. It's not right. You're a hero, you know. As far as I'm concerned, and then you also the other rumor was you didn't accompany him to the hospital. That's a damn lie, because they was about to give up on yeah. him in the hospital, you know, and then you told the doctors to go back in and, and keep going at it. Yeah, and I would never, I would, I would have never, like, left. You know, I stayed in the hospital for hours, even after trying to figure out how to contact his family. Right. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, the thing is, I, I'm clear. I, I, I think anybody with good sense who's listening with an open mind and and excuse me for being angry. It's just, you know, unfortunately, um, this whole situation just makes me angry. You know, I'm angry because I don't like the way this man was disrespected. This was a good man. This was a good, hardworking, 
black American man, you know, who, who, who had endured a lot, who was doing good work, who was trying to help his community. He was everything that black Americans say they want from black men. And you had all these people crapping on him after he died and, and, and just to get likes, you know, just, just to get for their kicks and giggles. But see, the thing is, these same people, they don't want you talking reckless about them, though. You see, when you start getting off uh, and, 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 and talking reckless and lying about them, then they get all sensitive. It's fools out here telling me I'm a bully and all I'm doing is roasting your ass and coming back at you. I didn't pick no fights with nobody. You see what I'm saying? You picked on my homeboy while he was dead and his mama and his, and his daughter got to see all that. And then you mad because I'm retaliating against you. That don't make me a bully. I might be vengeful, but that doesn't make me a bully. That makes me defending my homeboy or de defending my dead homeboy, which is, that's how I'm built. That's what I'm supposed to do. I wouldn't be a man if I didn't do that for somebody who I say is on my side. But, um, you know, and it just makes me angry that I even had to come out the pocket and do that. And all you other folks who've been around here defending Kevin Samuels, man, just shout out to y'all, man, and, and, and a big shout out to you, Hortensia. The thing I want to ask you, though, now is just how are you doing? Because as I sit here as a human being and trying to analyze, I've had people die around me before, Hortensia. You know, I've seen people shot and bleed out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I know that type of effect that it has. And most of these people, they wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. They ain't even been in a fist fight before. They don't even know what it's like to see when somebody get knocked out in person. And they, they don't know how, you know, getting, having somebody die right next to you like that, it does something to you, you know, um, or, or die in your presence or you one of the last. I've been there before, you know. How are you dealing with this whole situation in, in the aftermath? Are you seeking therapy or anything like that? I am. It's just, you know, hard. Like at first it was, it was so hard for me and it was just, I couldn't understand how people were using someone's trauma, you know, for entertainment. And so I couldn't even grieve, you know, about the, about what had happened because I had to deal with all the negativity and all the lies being said about me, you know, and so yeah. it was just really hard. And so I just felt like my, my family is just, you know, they were so supportive and my, my close friends are, were so supportive and I felt like that helped me, you know, get through everything. And I'm just so grateful for them because we, you know, my family, they, they, we stick together and they, you know, they were there for me whenever I needed them. And, you know, now I feel like I'm in a, a better place, but it was all thanks to them and my close friends. That's what's up. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And I'm, I'm, you know, it's unfortunate you had to deal with this BS, you know, um, you know, I, like I, I, I volunteer for it. That's why I'm on YouTube. I can deal with it, you know, but the people closest to you, you know, that, that's what these cowards do. They attack, they attack the ones closest to you. So they was too afraid mm -hmm. to call up Kevin Samuels and, and try this shit with him. They didn't want to call him because he'll call him out. He was, he was good at reading people too, Hortense. He would read your ass like the New York Times. And so they really, there's nothing they could really say to him. But what they try to do is attack the people that you love, you know, and in and, and, and doing so, they try to discourage other men, other strong men from stepping up and speaking the truth about what needs to be said in this society, you know, and that, that's mm -hmm. what I notice. You understand? But, um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're strong. Look, like let me him. tell you, let me, you, 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 you a strong young woman, you know, you're, you're a strong young woman, you know, from what I know about you and what Kevin told me about you, you're a good woman, you're a good human being. And, you know, Ain't nothing else anybody could ever ever ask for you to do in a fucked up situation like that. Excuse me for cussing. There's nothing else that you could have done. Because most of these clowns talking shit on the internet, when somebody fall out in front of them, all they would do is they would have whipped out their cell phones and start videotaping it. You understand? Oh, somebody called the police. They wouldn't have did a goddamn thing. They wouldn't have jumped to action like you did. You a hero. You feel me? So I don't know what else to say, sweetheart. Anything else you want to tell these folks and, and 
and whatnot. I'm going to tell y'all, leave her the fuck alone. How about that? Just leave her alone. She's a private citizen. Leave her alone. But but what else would you like to say, Hortensia? I just, you know, I obviously wanted to finally have a voice and defend myself and, and you know, to have all these people talking so negative about you and not knowing you is, is crazy. And like, I'm not an escort. I, I, I'm a travel nurse. I'm a hard worker. And, you know, I, like I said, I worked 50 to 60 hours during the whole pandemic. And it's just crazy to me when people say these things because it's just so far from the truth. And, you know, like it hurts at first, but now it's just like, you don't really care what people have to say. They don't know you, you know, it's like my family knows me, my friends know me and that's all I care about. And that's all. And you know, I just yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I just you know hope that everybody knows that like I I did everything I could to to try to save them, and you know I I tried. I know you. You we know you did, and we thank you so much. And I'm sure his family appreciates what you did because, like I said before, you know he he's a 53 year old black man who had a heart attack. That's never news. You know, the only reason this news is because it was Kevin Samuels. And the only reason anybody got something to say about it, you know, as far as you, because you're young, you look good. You know what I'm saying? You got a pretty face. And you ain't one of these big ass uh, heavy heifers out here that he was talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Too goddamn big for to, to, to fit in the bins. You see? So they're jealous of you. You understand what I'm saying? So... Don't yeah, I feel like you. the people that didn't. Yeah, I felt like the people that didn't like him just kind of wanted to just attack me. Yeah, they just haters. I mean, it's worse than haters. They all the motherfuckers are bound for hell. You see what I'm saying? Because they so fit, they're so busy hating on somebody else's life, they can't focus on their own. You see what I mean? And that's who you're dealing with. You're mm -hmm. dealing with a bunch of uh, 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 long nail. Uh, they got shit under their fingernails because they can't reach around. They let nails too long. And, 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 you know, they can't wipe their ass good. They just shitty. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> shitty. <laughs> and so don't let these shitty people rub off on you. Okay, Hortensia? Don't you do that. And uh, I just hope that you continue your therapy and you do your thing and and and, and just go on and enjoy your life. Uh, and uh, that's it. You know, I'm a, um, I might talk to these fools for a minute. I'm tired now. I'm, you didn't. I done went through, look, I've been angry, <laughs> sad. I'm exhausted, yeah. shit. I need a drink, man, you know? But uh, anyway, mm -hmm. God bless you, Hortensia. I'm going to let you go. If you got anything else today, you're always welcome to come back. But I think, in my opinion, you said enough. You understand? Yeah. You've done enough. Yeah. No, thank enough. you. You know, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me. I just kind of felt like I had to get that off my chest and you know kind of defend myself because people were just dragging my name and you know like ruining my reputation and i didn't think that was fair at all yeah i mean that's what they do they they do that because they don't have anything going on for themselves i've you know in the meantime since that's happened i've changed my name to the bounty hunter and what i've done is uh i found out a lot of information about a lot of these people that have been talking stuff see what i'm saying and mm -hmm. all of them are losers you look at some of their houses they live in shacks they got broken down cars they got some of these dudes been kicked out of and women and dudes they've been kicked out of their apartments and houses they've been divorced they're all losers they look bad they got bad skin bad breath bad built you see what i'm talking about and they jealous and they haters and they wish they could be like you or be like somebody like Kevin, you know, and y'all rise above them. And that's cool. Me, I get down and dirty with their asses because I don't mind doing what I do. But I appreciate you being a lady, being a, a, a dedicated to our friend. And, uh, you know, thank you so much, man. I, I Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Hortensia. I'm going to go ahead and let you go now. All right. God bless you. I'm going to take a quick right. break. Welcome back anytime. Yeah, thank you. Right. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Good night. This is Dennis Sperl. I'm going to take a break, quick break and uh, we'll be right back. I'm open up the chat room. Let a couple people in here. We'll chop it up. In the meantime, uh, give me a minute.
she said she want to take some photos in her new bikini. So I don't mind being the photographer. But go ahead. Tu quiero fotos, mami? Okay, no problem. Yo estoy listo. Yo magnífico. Yo similar de fotográfico profesional. Sí, sí. Yo estoy listo. Ahora, okay. I got to turn this off and take some pictures. Tu listo, mami? Ay, wow. Wepa. Mami, que lo que? Wow, wow, wow. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. All right, welcome back. This is Dennis Sperling. I hope you all appre appreciated that uh, ex exclusive conversation between me and Hortensia Alcantara, as you all heard. That was her first and only interview that she's done related to uh, the last evening uh, that Kevin Samuel spent on uh, this, this this planet. And, um, you know, I, I'm be honest with y'all, man. I, uh, shit had me caught up a little bit. You know, I, don't, I ain't really that fucking emotional, but, you know, when I hear that type of heroism, you know, this woman, you know, tried to say the homeboy like that, man. I know a lot of motherfuckers that just let your ass bleed out in the street because they don't want to get their goddamn clothes dirty. I didn't seen that shit before. You know, and she she went to bat for the homie, you know, and I appreciate that. You know, she yelling at the ambulance driver to drive faster, yelling at the doctor to go back in there. That's dope. You know, I mean, what else could you expect? You know, I, I know people that have been friends, call themselves family members, and wouldn't piss on you if you was on fire. You know what I'm talking about? So, you know, big shout out to her. But uh, anyway, um, hopefully, you know, you guys who appreciate Kevin Samuels, hit the KS button. Just go ahead and hit the Kevin Samuels button. Um, and if you see anybody, man, out there talking shit about Hortensia or Kevin, man, y'all make sure y'all jump on their ass, man. Report their ass, man. I mean, like, this girl, don't, this this young woman didn't deserve that, man. This woman is a hero. Man, y'all make sure y'all jump all over them clowns, man. You know, putting that girl picture up all, all on that shit, they don't even know the fucking story. That's, that's messed up, man. That girl's a hero. Type hero in the chat room for Hortensia. I'll type hero in the chat room for this young lady. But she's a hero. You know, y'all y'all go try and do uh, CPR for three or four minutes. This girl did it for 18 minutes. She's 130 pounds. You got a man who's six foot five, 200 some pounds, and you you trying to you exhausted and you trying to keep him alive. She kept him alive until the ambulance got there, man. She said he had a a, a a shockable pulse or a shockable something. Basically, she kept him alive till the ambulance got there. Kevin Samuels did not die when he was with her. She kept him alive. She's a hero. Otherwise, that same day, you're going to go when it's your time. It was his time to go. I mean, God chooses that time. He would have died alone. But because she was there, not only did he not die alone, but she put him in the safe hands of the EMS and the other medical providers. She kept him alive, man. You can't ask nothing to nobody else, man. You can't ask nothing of, 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 of uh, what more can you ask? Shit. Some of y'all got girlfriends. If she seen your ass, <laughs> she'll let your ass die in a minute. You know what I'm saying? You might die from a, a damn splinter. Some of these women you're dealing with. And now she's in therapy. Shit, I might need to take my butt to therapy. This is it's too much, you know? As a black man in America, you just start, I mean, my father passed away, Kevin passed away, my mentor passed away, I got cousins, I got an uncle that just passed away. This shit is starting to be too much. And now, 
We're about to go through a recession and have all these issues. The last thing we need is more people on the internet spreading these foolish rumors. So when y'all see these clowns, y'all make sure y'all y'all hit their channels up. Y'all, y'all hit their channels up. And I'm gonna tell you again, and like I said before, this is copywritten material. Anybody who uses this without my express written permission, you will get a copyright strike. That's all I'm saying. You will get a copyright strike and I may sue you. So let's not play that game. Y'all gonna learn some respect out here. I'm like the yard boss. I'm coming through slapping dudes with five fingers, getting you in line. We're going to learn respect out here. That's what's up. Y'all need to learn some respect. Y'all embarrassing. Black YouTube is embarrassing. For real. Every other group on the internet who's on YouTube, you can do this and then have your regular job. You understand? You can do this and go about your business. White girls do it, Hispanic dudes, black, uh, I mean, uh, white men, Hispanic, Asian, they go have a regular job. On black YouTube, it's like 1980s rap battles or something. Y'all just fucking disrespectful. And the truth is, black YouTube is saturated by lowlifes on both sides of the scale, men and women. Your lowlifes, your life is crummy. You don't like yourselves. So guess what? You want to bash other people. But we're going to check that. Keep that shit to yourself. I live a good life. I do this because I love my brothers and I want to see men do well. I don't do this for your fucking entertainment. I do this because I got sons and I want to put good examples out there. And I want to put good karma out there. So that good karma come back to me. I don't want this shit to force me to have to deal with you clowns like this. It's like shoveling shit. Dealing with black YouTube. Y'all need to check yourselves, man. One of a great man passed away. A brilliant man passed away and y'all shit it on him. The little lady that tried to save him, y'all tried to shit on her. Y'all some low lifes, man. You lowlifes, you scum, you convict ass niggas. I know who the fuck I'm talking about. You can't keep a job ass motherfuckers. You herpes having ass broads. That's who y'all are. I know you, I got your fucking background. I done pulled your whole card. Don't fuck with me. I'm not the one. But y'all lowlifes, man. And I wish I didn't have to talk to you all like that. But unfortunately, there's an element in black YouTube, you just, you're sewer, you're sewer rats. And this is the only language you understand. Kevin was different. Kevin tried to be eloquent and, and speak respectfully to people. And even it took him 30 or 40 minutes of talking to somebody before he hung up the goddamn phone. I'm I'm grimy with your ass. I get because I know this is the only language you understand. Because I come from motherfuckers like y'all. The only thing you understand is fucking violence and threats. That's the only thing you understand. I hate to say it like that. The only thing these motherfuckers understand is fucking violence and threats. And I'm gonna take something from you or cause you some inconvenience. That's it. That's all you understand. That's a shame. And you wonder why the rest of the world looks at us like this. Y'all criticize Kevin Samuels for wearing a fucking suit every day. But the motherfucker on here with saggy pants and, and, a, con and, and a record, you ain't got nothing. It's no smoke for them. That means you got a garbage mind. You got, a, you got swine on the brain. That's what you are. And this young lady, this beautiful young lady who Kevin was entertaining and, 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 and contemplate marrying and having a, a child with, you motherfuckers want to call her an escort with y'all whorish asses? Some of y'all was raised by hoes. Some of y'all mamas is hoes and prostitutes, real life 
forty dollars in the bag of chicken wings, prostitutes, and y'all got the nerve to talk about this young woman. Y'all baby mamas is hoes, and <laughs> y'all got the nerve to talk about old girl. Think about that. What comes out of your mouth is what's in it. That's what's part of you. That's how you think. You low level, low thinking scum. And this is not how I wanted this to go. I was trying to have a decent standard. I got the fucking suit on and shit with the tie. You know, I'm trying to keep it above love, but y'all don't understand that. You just don't. You don't. You don't understand decency and, and honor and respect and dignity. People got to talk to you like this. This is how your raggedy ass mammies used to talk to you before she slapped you upside the head. This is the only language you gutter, gutter fuckers, motherfuckers understand. I'm just, can I keep it 100 with you? This is the only language you understand. Punishment and pain. And then you want to bitch and complain when somebody jumps in your motherfucking shit. Now you a victim. Oh, he's a bully. Oh, he's suing me. Oh, he's brother. Shut the fuck up. That's what I got for y'all. Shut the fuck up. You deserve what you get because you brought it on yourself. I grew up and I moved out of fucking South Central LA because I didn't want to have to hurt no motherfucking body. And I tried to get an education and live right, not break no laws, raise my kids to be disciplined, good Americans. I'm hopping on YouTube because I'm trying to say, hey, Brother, you don't have to be a dope dealer or a rapper or a motherfucker dribbling basketballs and catching balls on the fucking football field all day and, and, and breaking up your knees and you 35 years old and you walking with a, a, a fucking cane and crutches and you can't think straight because all them head collision. You don't have to do all that to get rich. You could be a lawyer. You could be a doctor. You could be an engineer. Shit, you could be a plumber, electrician. You could do any of that You just, just, just to make the money. I come on there to try to show brothers, hey, man, look, I'm a lawyer. I'm down. I've been where you from. And you motherfuckers got nothing but smoke for me. You mad at me. You hood ass, gut ass, low down, frog, dirty ass, maggot motherfuckers are mad at me for coming on here showing the brothers they have another way. Kevin Samuels, dress up, motherfucker. Put some cologne on. Put a tie on. Change your image. And y'all mad at him. Y'all call y'all call him gay. But well, really, these gay motherfuckers is coming up out of the penitentiary. That's the real gay motherfuckers if you really want to talk about it. They in there washing drawers and braiding hair and shit. They got a whole grown-ass man between their legs braiding hair. And th these are the people y'all look up to. These punk motherfuckers. I see them crying in the motherfucking holding tank when they giving them football years of uh, football numbers away to them. Y'all don't see that shit. I seen that shit early on in my career. They come out with them on parade, them motherfuckers out in them orange sump jumpsuits. I like to waive a formal reading of the bill of information enter into a plea of not guilty and requested trial by jury. Bam, I got that shit memorized. Next up, sir, you've agreed to accept 50 years. Yes, sir. You plead guilty to 50 years. All right, take them away. I seen that shit thousands of times working in the courthouse. That's why I don't do criminal law. But then when you catch them clowns behind closed doors, they crying, ooh, waving to their mama and shit. That's the people y'all look up to in the black community. And they ain't shit, and it makes you ain't shit for looking up to. And I'm not talking to all black people. I'm talking to you scummy motherfuckers that had negative shit to say about Kevin Samuels and the other brothers trying to set a better example for black men in the community. Black men in the image. We got the whole world looking at us right now. The whole world is looking at us right now on YouTube. And this is the best you maggot motherfuckers can do. You garbage mouth, rotten ass, disgusting, low life scum motherfuckers. The best you can do is talk reckless about Kevin Samuels in his death. And y'all, y'all didn't give him a reprieve when he was alive. That's what I'm saying. You talk bad about it. I don't know how he did it. I couldn't fucking do it. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'd have been on y'all ass way before that. You see what I did. You came to me 
Shit, I said, fuck all you motherfuckers. I had a whole month that I went on low life scum motherfuckers <laughs> called you Pookie and Ray Ray's and wasn't shit you could do about it, but cry. Why are you talking about us like that? Ugh. He's a boule. He's the latest. No, motherfucker, I know you. That's what I am. I know you. You're cowards. You're punks. You wasn't man enough to hang in there and do what the rest of the men did and make shit happen for yourself, either by getting a trade, driving trucks, or being a stick in the college, whatever. You wasn't man enough to do that, and now you're just acting tough. That shit don't rock with other grown men, nigga. We read you, motherfucker. We know who you are. You understand? We know who you are. Don't let the fade fool you, homeboy. Don't let the suit and tie fool you. I know you. I see your heart. You got a heart. You 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 roar like a lion and got the heart of a lamb. You's a punk. And most of y'all don't know what it's like to get socked out. That's why you talking all that shit from the internet, hiding your motherfucking identity going by these call signs. Because at the end of the day, you a punk. Kevin walked around the people. They knew his name, his whole name, where he was from. He walked out amongst the people. The one that y'all, y'all questioned his masculine. This motherfucker walked out amongst the people. New York, Miami, he out on the street. I'm like, damn, no bodyguards or nothing. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't scared of the people. Most of y'all won't even show y'all face. You understand? So who's a punk? <laughs> who's a real punk in this motherfucker? Huh? Y'all need y'all hiding this shit. Y'all hiding y'all. Y'all hiding. <laughs> he out there out and about. You some hoes. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You's a real hoe. <laughs> now I'm laughing at y'all motherfuckers, man. <laughs> Little bitch asses. Anyway, man, y'all got to cam up, man. We ain't going to have no hidden faces up in there. If you want to come into this conversation, come on and cam up. We don't do no hiding faces around here. If you got something to say, you're going to man up. You're going to show your face and your identity. We don't do that hiding shit. I need to see your faces. But uh, excuse my rant. Again, I this is a very emotional uh, sort of situation because I don't like the way you know, my people did my friend. I don't appreciate that. My man, Yoga Yoga, that's my guy, man. Always good to have you up in here, bro. Uh, you from the ATL, man. You know, you uh, you know, he was uh out there having a good time doing his thing. You gotta unmute yourself, yoga. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Yeah, I got they said I got the KS fans scared. My bad. Shout out to the Kevin. I'm a nice, I could be nice. I'm nice sometimes. I'm nice, y'all. You got to fight for your brother sometimes, and uh, this is yeah. needed, Dennis. Your rant is needed. Uh, and they got to move back up off the young lady like that, let her live a life. Y'all see that she's really a nurse and all that other stuff, people trying to make a quick buck. The man was prolific, and uh, his uh, teachings uh, are standing the test of time, and it'll be another 20 years. It'll be more people still trying to battle the ideology and the strategy of the man. Man, so, you know how I know these fools is cowards, though, Yoga? Let me tell you how I know these fools is cowards. I know they cowards because they had all that smoke for Kevin Samuels, but then you got a motherfucker shooting up a goddamn grocery store in, 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 in goddamn Buffalo, and they ain't said shit about him. They said they're looking up his family. they ain't looking up all they these look, other... They, nah. they ain't messing with them. They ain't going to their jobs. They ain't trying to nah. find out how much they make, where their daughter stay at. Nope. And, and, and it's the... It's the, it's the uh, we're seeing the 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 Uber Uber crabs in the barrel. Uber yeah. crabs in the barrel. Y'all right. so big and back. Y'all don't want them motherfucking white supremacist racists on y'all motherfucking asses. That's what's up. So y'all talk all that shit about Kevin Samuels, but then, but then don't say shit when you got somebody shooting up uh uh, uh goddamn uh churches and, and grocery stores and shit. Y'all ain't got no smoke for them. You see what I'm saying? What's up with that? You understand? Well, what's up with that? <laughs> you so big and bad, you won't show your motherfucking face. What's up with that? How you going how you gonna throw a rock and hide? That's not manly. It's brave. It's very brave. brave. 
the high yeah. Kevin talked about putting the family back together and yeah. knowing that that was the the first fight to fight back against the oppressive system. So Kevin was trying to put us in places where we're more powerful economically and politically and what we're doing if we're the family unit. So the brother was extremely brave. And then to go out here and walk around Atlanta, you can see Kevin walking in Buckhead in Lennox Mall. When yeah. the people get robbed in Lennox Mall, y'all see Kevin up there. Hey, managers, y'all need to get this right. You People can drive in, in Atlanta, go to Cheesecake Factory, go to a certain spot up in Buckhead and see, and literally see the brother. Yeah. And so for yeah. all the, the trolls, this brother literally was like, walk up on me then in real life. And we see some of the real internet trolls walked up to Kevin and did all that talking. And then they smiled and took pictures with Kevin. I know, man. Oh, bitch ass motherfuckers, man. Let me let me get somebody else in here. Hold on a minute, yoga, yoga. Hey, what up, Lou? How you doing, Lou? It's always good here. Lou, I know, excuse the language, man. I know uh it's all good. Yeah, Lou is uh Lou is a fan of Kevin's from Brazil, but he lives in America and like he came over here after uh you know Kevin passed away. So I apologize to all the Kevin Samuels fans. I'm not Kevin Samuels. I'm not he's a nice man who he was a nice man i'm not kevin i will i'm different you see what i'm saying i don't we had a different upbringing you see what i mean um but anyway lou man on behalf of all the kevin sandwich fans go ahead and speak man uh, um i enjoyed the interview you know i enjoyed i enjoyed it and the, the interview for me and for a lot of other people i'm sure that it gave us closure because mm -hmm. we truly didn't know what happened and um I think it's interesting, you know, when Kevin Samuels died, I have to be honest, I cried like a baby. You know, I would watch his live streams religiously. I felt like I, I felt like he was an uncle, like he was a father. I felt like he was someone that we could reach out to virtually and that truly tried to help us. So the, the, the interview gave us closure and yeah. just one thing, I think it's hilarious that people would judge her because of how she looks and had no idea yeah. of what her heart is like and had no idea of what she did for unc you know right, right, yeah. she mentioned the fact that she saw in the machine that he his heart still had we can call it an electrical pulse okay right, yeah, yeah. meaning there was still a chance that he could be revived what would you do you 400 pound Five two dress size sixteen. You listen. You know I, I'm just happy that she came on here and she yeah. um, gave us a little bit of closure. I am very happy. I feel like a weight has been lifted off our shoulders because we truly didn't know. And Kevin was that private. Yeah, he truly yeah. did not share these things with us. Um, and I'm sure even with you guys that were closer to him as well. So. I'm just happy that she came on here and yeah, said man. that. You know, he had, he was so excited. He called he called me like the night before he passed away, and he was so excited about it. He had told me about send me a picture of her, and I'm like, okay. He wanted the same thing for himself mm -hmm. that he was doing for other people. You know what I'm saying? Like he wanted for himself what he had done for me and helping me find my fiance two years ago. That's what he wanted for us. Like the man still had hope, and man, I was done. Look, man, Lou, I was. I done. know, I know the story. I know yeah, the story. I, yeah. So why the fuck? Did, let me, let, you know, let me show you, man. I ain't gonna even. I ain't gonna put no pictures up. But what I'm saying is, I was done. Like my life was gonna be settled. One of these, three hundred million dollar class action cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Leave the country. Relocate. Wait for the other three or four to settle continue allowing my associates to take over my law practice. I'm going to go to the island, to the, to the DR. Sit, sit back and enjoy it. And y'all fucking work. I'm going to live to be 89, 90 years old on a beach somewhere. I was done. Fuck relationship. Are you kidding me? Yeah. The bullshit the, in America? Hell no. Nah. But it was because of him, man, that I found a nice lady. And the crazy thing is, man, my whole life has changed since I found my lady. You know what I mean? She watches me. She cooks for me. She cooks for the kids. She cooks. She makes sure I go to the fucking doctor. My You're big going to live a lot longer because yeah. of her. That's 100% yeah, correct. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say this, man. I was sick. I didn't even know I was fucking sick. I was just muscling my way through it. Mm -hmm. And 
no lo and behold my blood pressure was a stroke level and it's been like that for like four years like at any moment i was i could have been having a heart attack and it wasn't but for my lady that took me to the doctor and said you know this is hereditary in your family and then i started asking my family and was like yeah you just now getting on them i've been on these pills since i was 39 i'm like wow so it's because of my girl that you know i'm healthier now you know, I have more energy and I don't have headaches when I wake up. And Kevin wanted that for himself. And so, man, the thing that breaks my heart is, man, if he had just met her like six months sooner, you see what I mean? She'd have been taking care of him like he take like my lady take care of me, man. I find you it know? funny that the haters, and not to cut you off, Uncle no, D, but cool. I find it funny that the haters will say, oh, well, because I watched this stuff religiously. Nurses, one of the women that he said, stay away from. Mm -hmm. But uncle was on a different level than you bimbos yeah, okay yeah. He, could, he 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 was on a different level he could have wiped her up and she would be his personal nurse yeah. all right so to all the haters talking about well well kevin said stay away from he's not worried about that he was on a different level than you okay so yeah. And, yeah, and, I, and, but, I, but you know just and i'm gonna tell you this and i'm glad you called in particularly because i want all you black americans to recognize that Kevin Samuels has more fans that are not black American than he does that are black Americans. The, 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 the English speaking Brazilian community in the United States was catching on because he's just like us. Mm -hmm. He's conservative like us. Yeah. So we were catching on too. Don't, don't get it twisted. We yeah, were on and, him too. And in Africa, in the UK, they love Kevin. And our, there was a guy that told me that Kevin Samuels could have sold out a stadium in Australia. And what I'm trying to tell y'all is in about five to 10 years, it's going to be a new Kevin Samuels. Well, it, before that, in four or five years, it's going to be a Kevin Samuels. It's, it, you're going to be like, it sounds like that's his rhetoric, but he ain't going to look nothing like y'all because y'all didn't appreciate him. But all these other cultures appreciate y'all shitted on the man when he died. You see what I'm saying? That's messed up, man. And I, I just, I can't get over that. You see what I mean? Like, Go ahead. And one last thing, uh, JB, shout out to JB. He, he gave her a $50 super chat. He asked this question. What, what I, he said, I'm going to have to have a conversation with our city council. Why did it take 18 minutes for the ambulance to arrive? That's hilarious. Why are we paying our taxes to these people? Yeah. These people are supposed to be on top of their game. I thought that was an interesting thing to point out as well, well it, because man, I, I don't want to speculate because I don't want the rumors, but let me tell you something. I'm going to be, be honest with you, bro. Like being a black man in America, unless you like the president or something like that, like they, they're going to treat you like you're a black man in America. They're not, they're going to say, okay, black dude on, on the operating table. I'm, I mean, I, I, that might be paranoid. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's, that's one thing that I think too. So I, I mean, but I, I don't know. I'm just happy she was there and she kept him alive until the ambulance showed up. Yeah, to yeah. all you haters, he didn't die alone, but you might. Yeah. Let's just put yeah. that out there. Ah, there it is. To all you haters, he did not die alone, but you might. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much, Lou. I appreciate it, man. All right, God bless you, man. So, man, God bless y'all. I appreciate y'all. We are two hours and 24. I don't do these two-hour shows, man, but either way. Um... Thank you, Hortensia Alcantara. Thank you for the interview. I appreciate your honesty. Um, I don't know what else to say other than the fact that uh, this is for the Kevin Samuels fans. I appreciate y'all. And I hope that, um, you know, I hope this gives you closure. You know, again, this is not something that I plan on doing, hadn't planned on doing it, but you know, she reached out to me and I said, well, you know, think about it. Let me know. And and uh, we gave it a three or four weeks and she still wanted to have this conversation. So I said, come on. I told you, you don't owe him nothing. You don't owe him a damn thing. But she wanted to talk about it. So I had to respect that. And in memory of Kevin, uh, I let her come on in and have this conversation. But I'm, I'm happy to hear because that was information I didn't hear. I didn't know that part of what was keeping Kevin alive was him getting up and that was that was the times you know when when you are oftentimes I notice old people when they uh 
when their longtime wife or husband dies. They die soon after. And it lets you know that that was the thing that was keeping them alive. You know what I'm saying? And that's dope. You know, and I respect that. Uh, but anyway, man, I, I don't have anything else to say about this. Shout out to all the Kevin Samuels fans. As I said before, this is copywritten material. What you're looking at right now is copywritten. If you decide that you want to uh, use this information, if you decide you want to use this, it's copywritten. And I'm going to move for a strike and try to remove your channel. Because you guys have to learn respect. Now, if you ask for written consent, send me an email, you ask for written consent, more likely than not, I'm going to give you written consent because it, this is important for this story to go out. But you brothers and sisters on Black YouTube, you need to learn to respect each other. You know, this is, this is the gutter of YouTube. It's terrible. But this is a microcosm of what we're dealing with in the Black community. We don't respect each other. It's just a shame. You wonder why black men are shooting each other down in the street like that? Because we don't respect each other. You can't have unity with people that you don't respect. I mean, it is what it is. It's the truth. How we got that way, we could talk about it. But I know what we can do right now is begin to move forward. Let's not be like our ancestors. Let's not be so ego-driven and arrogant that we can't begin to respect each other either in life or death. What Kevin Samuel's life and death should have showed you is that we could have a piece of gold, we could have a diamond and not truly appreciate it until we see it in the possession of somebody else. We destroyed the ghetto, didn't we? We moved out the ghetto, didn't we? Yes, we did. And then got mad when white folks and Asians and all these other folks moved back in the ghetto and regentrified it. But you, you crapped on it. Now, you're going to be angry when somebody takes Kevin Samuel's methodology and talking points and go make millions of dollars with it. You're going to be angry. Oh, that's Kevin Samuel. He was one of our. But look how y'all treated him. I want you to think about that. And look how you treated the people, specifically uh, his mother, Miss Beverly, and his daughter, and Hortensia. Look how y'all treated them. That ain't cool, man. It's a lesson in that, man. But either way, like I said, man, this is Uncle D, Uncle D, man. Ain't nothing beloved this way, man. But either way, family, we got to do better, man. God bless y'all. This is Uncle D. I'm out, man. <laughs>